Good morning, Melissa. This is Rich. I'm going to make you a quickie video and try to answer your questions. If that doesn't work, go ahead and make an appointment with me. We can do this again in Zoom. But here's your original data. And the first thing I did was I looked at the group. And you put them in four different groups, but you use text. So the first thing I did was this. Hold on one second. I created uh, two new variables, one called violent. And everybody was marked with a two that was non-violent and a one that was violent, right? Regardless of gender. And then the second variable I made was gender. And one is female. And two is male. And again, for the violent, one means they're violent, two means they're nonviolent. Okay, so these two variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bunch of t-tests to see if there's a significant difference in these scores between the violent or not, and then again for the gender or not. Those are going to be two separate t-tests. But before we go there, let's check the first assumption of normality that we need to run a t-test. So we're going to go to Analyze... And normality, we're talking about the DVs. Those are all your your measurement variables there. So we're going to go to Analyze, Descriptives, Explore. We're going to kick in all your measurements. Let's get this where you can see it. And we're just going to look at the histograms. Histograms can be misleading, but the normality plots, this is the main one. Let's take a look at that real quick. Takes a minute. There it is. So there's all the descriptive statistics, which we don't need at this point in time. This is what we need. So the Kolmogorov-Shmurnov test, if these sig values or p-values are less than 0 0.05, that means it violated the assumption. And to me, it looks like most of them did violate the assumption. And if you use the other test of normality, the Shapiro-Wilk, it basically agrees. So it looks like most of these are violating the assumption of normality. So maybe the t-test is not the right one to use, but we're going to run it anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and run your t-tests. Let's do analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test. Let's do with the gender first. And we'll stick all our measurements in there. And gender, we use the numbers one and two. One were female, two were male. Click, continue, click, okay. So here's all the mean data. And here's all your t-tests. So for your t-tests, you're basically looking at the sig value column. So if it was less than 0.05, that means there's a significant difference. So there was on F, F, B, K, S, H, S, D, P, D, M, F, P, A, P, T, S, C. In fact, most, most of them, M, A, and S, I. So in other words, there were significant differences all over the place if we use this data as is. And here's the means you can compare who was the higher and who was the lower in each one of these, right? This is how you would cite them, okay? So that is for gender. So gender, big significant difference there. Now, some things you might want to watch out for are sample size. Um, your sample sizes are pretty even enough, right? 109, 140, that kind of thing. So that's not going to be an issue with you. So now let's repeat this for the violent group. Analyze, compare means, input examples. Out with gender, in with violent. And again, we used one and two for violent. And remember, one was violent, two was nonviolent. So here's the violent and nonviolence. Same thing, we're going to look at the sig values. And they're significant. They're all significant except for HY and MF. Okay, so and... This last one, SI, it's pretty dang close. You could call it borderline significant. So in other words, you got significance between the groups all over the place. Now, let's do the tests that we should do. And 
because I see here this this second this this column right here the the um, Levine's test for equality of variance that's the that's the other assumption for a t test data. In other words, the variance between each of the subgroups there should be relatively the same. And if this sig value is less than 0.05, that means you violated it. So for E, for F and FB, you violated both assumptions. So you can't use a T test. Some of these you did not violate it. But again, you violated normality. That's still problematic. So that violated, HY violated, PA violated. So I'm thinking you got too many violations on both of your assumptions in order to run a t-test. So we're going to switch it over to the non-parametric version of the t-test. I believe it's called the Whitney Man. The good news is you should probably get the same results, relatively the same results. If there's a significant difference, it will show up in this test as well. But this is what we call a non-parametric test. We go to non-parametrics, legacy, two independent samples. And again, our grouping variable is going to be, let's do gender first. And we used one and two. Those are identifiers. And then we're going to stick in all these guys here. And again, you should probably get pretty much the same results as the t-test. So, and this is the test we're going to use, the man Whitney U. It uses mean ranks and sum of ranks. So it that's a huge thing. I'm not even going to try to explain it to you because I'm not sure I know it myself. But this is how you tell. Again, you look at the synth, the asymptotic significance value or the p-value. And if this number is less than 0.05, there is a significant difference. So the same thing. It looks like there's a significant difference in all these scores between the gender groups except for L. HY, and that's it, right? Because all the rest of these are all below 0 0.05. Now let's repeat that process with the violent group. Analyze, non-parametric, related. No, let's go to legacy, sorry. And two independent, and then out with the gender, end with the violent. And those should be just a one and a two again. Oops, one and a two. Continue, okay. And again, here's your, your rankings. But the same thing, if this, if this sig value is less than 0.05, then you prove that there's a significant difference between the two scores, whatever they were. So again, there was a significant difference in your DVs between violent and non-violent, except for, right, I'm, I'm reading this bottom row, except for HY again, MF, there was no difference. And that's it. So yeah, you got significant differences all over the place. So now, real quick, we're going to do what we call a 2x2 two two ANOVA to see if there's inter any interaction between gender and whether they were violent or not. Okay, give me a second to get preset up for that. All right, factorial ANOVA, here we go. We're gonna go to analyze. We're gonna go to general linear model. We're gonna go to mult or sorry, univariate. That means one DV at a time. Oh, and we can only do them one at a time. Oh my goodness gracious, okay. Um, we're gonna cheat, right? I don't wanna, do, I don't, I don't wanna run 10 separate tests. This can take all day. So we're gonna do a shortcut. We're gonna go to analyze. General linear model, multivariate. It means multiple DVs. So this isn't really the right test, but it's a quick shortcut to, just to take a snapshot of what's going on. So your fixed factors means categorical variables. So we're going to stick in, no, we're going to stick in the violent and the gender. And this will tell us if there's any significant interactions going on. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the interactions. And we might as well check a few options. The assumptions, descriptives, effect size, power, power, power. And let's see what happens. And okay, there's your categorical variables. Which one, how many at each one. And there's your descriptive statistics again. Uh, this means you did violate the assumption of homogeneity variance, which we already knew. Don't worry about that. Now, here is, 
so these are all zeros, which basically means that, yeah, again, it's agreeing. You got significant differences between the genders, between the violence and nonviolence, but we're looking for the interaction between the two, which means that we're going to do, where is our interaction? There it is right there. This star term means if there's an interaction. In other words, example, men who are violent tend to have higher scores. Or, or females that are nonviolent tend to have lower scores, significantly lower. Okay, so that's what this means. And again, we're just going to look at the sig value. And there it is right there. That's this column. And so none of these numbers, I take it back. There's, there's one number, MF, that shows a significant interaction. So in other words... We're going to go back up to MF and look at the men and the women scores and the violent and the non-violent scores. That's all it means, but that's the only one is MF. So if we go back up to the MF means, where's my MF, 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 Did I miss it? Did I miss it? Probably. Oh, that's the Levine's test, my bad. We need this one. MF, okay. So this one says that Female violent is significantly high. Oh my gosh, that's what it is. And then you got a nonviolent male, which is significantly low. So only for the MF, it matters if they're male and female and whether they're violent or not violent. So let me say it again. The combination is this. The male nonviolent have significantly lower MF scores than the violent females. So that's what that means. And that's basically it. Um, so muy importante, I was checking your output to my output and it's different. Okay. Some of the stuff that you did, I had to look into the code, but your groups here are, you split it up between male violent and female violent. So this is only for the violent people, these T tests that we ran down here. And so your results, let's get down to the SIG values here, right? Now again, this first this first sig value over here, that is for the Levine's test. We're not looking at that. We're gonna look at let's get this one in here. We're looking at this one right here. So let's let's take a look. So so right, my sig value on F, but this was between the genders here, male and female. And yours is between the male violent and the female violent. So that's a different comparison. So just just a, just a little sidebar that your your output is different than mine because you split up the variables different than I did. I hope this helps. And again, uh, we can make a Zoom meeting and we can go over this in person if you want to. But that's it for now. Okay, so I will talk to you later, alligator. Ciao.